I'm Glenn. King Solomon wrote that there is a time for everything under heaven. There is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to be silent and a time to speak. We're going to try to do some laughing. I don't know about dancing, but also speaking. Today we are here to celebrate the life of an incredible, wonderful woman, my mom. Unbelievably, she actually planned many of the details of this day ahead of time. One thing she said she wanted was lots of color. It makes sense, she was a colorful woman. On of that fact, we decided to the best of our ability to wear color and not black and white today. The first gift I ever gave my mother was before I was born. The gift I gave her was morning sickness. <laughs> you may wonder at the designation gift, but it was a gift because it was the fulfillment of a six-year longing to conceive. Lest to follow two years later, and then she had more than she could handle. <laughs> While we were growing up, mom always seemed to know how to deal with our various challenges, whether it was acne, muscle growing pains, headaches, bullying, or whatever the adversity. Those same things seem small now, but at the time she treated them like they were very important. As protective as she was, she still encouraged our adventures, whether it was bike riding, tree climbing, playing with firecrackers, swimming in the ocean, building go-karts. Mom loved the sound of music. We would always wake up on Sabbath morning with Christian music playing, and she had a taste for the livelier kind of music. I remember one of my favorites was the Wedgwood Trio, which was a bluegrass band. In fact, Mom liked to have music playing whenever she could, and many times she played the piano herself. I remember one time seeing her practice on an old pump organ. It was one of those ones where you had a pump as you were playing. I don't know how she did both things at the same time, but that's the closest I'm getting to dancing today. When Lester and I decided we wanted to become doctors, Mom and Dad gave up their comfortable life in South Africa to come to the United States so we could have the opportunity to go to medical school. They had no idea about completing college, taking MCAT entrance tests, applying for loans, or whatever else would be needed to get into medical school, but they were willing to make the sacrifice. When I was a senior in high school, mom typed a 70-page paper for us, for, for me. She was the typist of the family. Well, when she had completed that uh, paper, we drove home from the office that day, and I ran out of gas and it was the middle of winter. We walked home in the snow and it didn't seem to phase mom at all. When I married Sandy, mom immediately accepted her into the family as a daughter in love. Of course, she was thrilled beyond words each time we announced the new grandchild on the, was on the way. When the grandchildren were small, sometimes mom would go on vacation with us and sometimes she would babysit so Sandy and I could have a vacation as a couple. Mom liked to celebrate. She would turn any simple meal into a celebration by deciding to make someone's favorite food. For the grandchildren, it was often baked spaghetti. For me, it was usually peanut butter gravy. Mom loved family traditions like baking Christmas cake and plum pudding. She particularly liked providing Christmas crackers and then having everyone wear the paper crowns inside them. When my kids were young, the whole extended family would gather together and dress up in bathrobes and towels to celebrate the nativity story. Mom loved being the shepherd or the angel. She also experienced lots of joy by participating in the angel tree program. She loved to do puzzles, but would donate the puzzles to the prison for the prisoners once she had completed them herself. When cake was part of a celebration, whatever that celebration, the neighbors were always included. She looked forward to hearing regularly from her sons by phone. Now, I'm gonna tell you something shocking about mom. She loved to go tent camping when we were teenagers. In fact, that's how we came to love Myrtle Beach so much, by doing several camping trips on the beach. The following were some of her favorite things. She loved to crack little jokes and also passed on her sense of humor. 
She loved to give people nicknames. Two of mine were Finlay's and Glenbob. She loved to cook, but she also loved to eat out. She loved to have her hair brushed, and I loved to brush her hair. She loved to feed hummingbirds and take care of cats, whether they were her own or whether they were stray. Our growing up years also included several dogs and even a parakeet. She loved making scrapbooks, and I loved providing the pictures for those scrapbooks. She could enter a lady's bathroom alone and come out with several new friends. Her favorite TV program was Jeopardy, which she enjoyed with full participation. Her favorite board game was Chinese checkers, which she took to a whole new level with double and triple jumps. She loved surprises. I was the recipient of a memorable surprise. My birthday is around Thanksgiving and occasionally falls on Thanksgiving Day. Often my birthday is lost in the Thanksgiving Day festivities. In 2001, I had gone with my family to my mother-in-law's home to celebrate Thanksgiving with my wife's extended family. That evening, we got home. We were extremely su surprised to find that mom and dad were in my house, having driven 500 miles from Myrtle Beach to Maryland to surprise me in preparation for my birthday, my 40th birthday, two days later. The surprise was their presence. Mom was the right wife for my dad and the right mom for me. All through, all through my 54 years, my mom has been looking out for me. It reminds me of the way that God looks out for us. A couple of years ago, I discovered that I had an ascending aortic aneurysm, just like my mom. I did some research, but I kind of decided to wait and watch. Then about six months later, after my diagnosis, mom's aneurysm dissected, requiring emergency open heart surgery. Seeing her cope with that ordeal and seeing her fight for her life convinced me to have similar surgery done electively before anything catastrophic happened to me. She had given me life in 1961, and now again she gave me a new lease on life by leading the way toward my life-preserving surgery. Over and over again, Mom came through with self-sacrificing, unconditional love. She approached life with joy in the Lord, and her motto in life was, Praise ye the Lord. The sun has set for beautiful dawn but the light of life will return to raise her in the last day. Oh, what a reunion celebration that will be. One of my mom's favorite scriptures was Revelation 22, verse 4 and 5. They say, They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or even the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. I wanted to end my time with a little prayer. Shall we bow our heads? Lord, thank you for mom. Her life was another way that you demonstrated your great love for us. Thank you for all the sacrifices she made, all the joy she brought, and all the lives she so gently touched in her 83 years. In Jesus' name, amen.